The limiting reactant is the reactant in a reaction that would get used up first and as a result stop the chemical reaction from proceeding. So in a typical example, you would be given quantities of both reactants. So in this example, we've been given 15 grams of lead nitrate and 20 grams of potassium chloride and asked to determine what mass or what amount of the excess reactant remains. So obviously once the limiting reactant has run out, there's still going to be some of the other reactant that remains. So we cannot compare masses of different substances to each other, so our first step is always to convert our mass of substance into a number of moles, and then we can use the ratio in which these two substances react to determine which is the limiting reactant. And we can do that by saying the ratio of, or in which lead nitrate reacts to potassium chloride is a ratio as taken from the balanced equation of one to two. Now, what that tells us, or what we can do here is we can say, let us assume that the lead nitrate is a limiting reactant, in which case we would use up all of the lead nitrate. And then the question is, how much potassium chloride would we need? And we can do that by using the ratio here, multiply by two to find that we would need 0 0.09 moles of potassium chloride. From this, we can clearly see that we have used up all of the lead nitrate and there's still a whole lot of potassium chloride that remains, which means that this must be our excess reactant and lead nitrate must be the limiting reactant. This can also be done the other way by making the opposite assumption to start with. If we again look at the ratio of lead nitrate to potassium chloride, we can see from the balanced equation that it's one to two, but now we assume that we use up all of the potassium chloride, which would mean that we would require 0.135 moles of lead nitrate. And we can very clearly see that we do not have 0.135 moles of lead nitrate, which once again shows us that lead nitrate must be the limiting reactant and potassium chloride must be our excess reactant. You are not required to do both of these. You can only do, you only need to do one because they both give exactly the same answer. Now to answer the question, how much of the excess reactant remains? We can see from this reaction over here that we would only use up 0 0.09 moles of potassium chloride, which means that if we started with this amount here, 0 0.27 moles, we used up that amount 0 0.09 moles. That must mean that there was 0.18 moles of potassium chloride in excess. Questions like this can normally continue and common ways in which they do is they would ask what quantity of one of the products would be formed. In which case the only trick here is to remember that you always use your limiting reactant to whatever you've been asked for. So in this case let's say potassium sorry, lead chloride, and you would say your ratio of limiting reactant to lead chloride, in this case we said the limiting reactant was lead nitrate, so that is a ratio of one to one. So when asked what quantity of lead chloride would be formed, we know that we used up 0 0.045 moles of our limiting reactant lead nitrate, which would mean that we would have formed 0 0.045 moles of lead chloride.